One of the hazards of paying attention to the crisis in the church as it unfolds is that at times stories break that are potentially so explosive that they can't be put aside while it develops. Today we have one of those stories before us. I'm going to present to you what we know for sure, including explosive allegations made about Pope Francis, the investigation involving similar allegations, and the other important details. First, however, we're going to explore the central figure to these allegations because their background is important to understanding why caution should be exercised in this case. That central figure is Natasha Jait, a former actress and model who had, by her own account, spent almost 30 years investigating child sex trafficking and pedophilia among the social and political elites of Argentina. Last year, she gave an interview on Argentinian TV where she made accusations against sports club owners and anti-trafficking advocates for themselves being pedophiles, as she implicated Pope Francis. Not for being a pedophile, but for being closely connected to pedophiles. The following clips are from that interview. ¿Está me contacta una empresa, que no voy a decir el nombre, para que, como yo me la paso en la noche, conozco mucha gente de noche, trabajo de noche, entre la radio, más las conducciones y locuciones de noche, veo muchas cosas, para que investigue varios casos. El primer caso que me dan a investigar es el de tu amigo. ¿Qué hago? Filmaciones, logística, un año de seguirlo. Sí, desmayate no, ahora. No, no me voy a desmayar eh, nada porque estás diciendo una... una, una es una barbaridad. Prostitutas. Terrible lo que estás prostitutas diciendo. Prostitutas de la calle, déjame hablar, prostitutas de la calle y de, lamentablemente, de, de departamentos por 200, 500 pesos, tuvieron que soportar vejaciones, eh, abusos, abusos sexuales, de, de poder del señor Vera. Todo mentira. Este, quedarse, él eh, supuestamente despegaba los papelitos de ellas, pero pegaba los suyos, se apropió de la Alameda, se apropió de prostíbulos, uh -huh. este, Todo, apri, aprieta, apretó, una apretó a cabaret, terrible. apretó a cocodrilo a varios lugares Todo para lo contrario, Gustavo con Vera ha denunciado... La... Disculpame, pero, perdón, eh, eh, anda a revisar la basura de Gustavo Vera, a ver qué Gustavo come. Gustavo Vera ha denunciado... Papa lo perdón, la tra... no, pero, eh, o sea, el periodista de revisar basura. El Papa, el papa es el papa no eh, bastante es, cercano a... El Papa ha trabajado, perdón, está hablando de un amigo mío. Ay, qué bien, lindo amigo tenés. Eh, vos sabés que el Papa también ha trabajado... Vos sabés en que Bergoglio, la ¿te puedo contar algo de gracia y Bergoglio? No, espera, espera, porque me parece que es importante, porque tirar cualquier... Eh, tu no tiro cualquier, aire es, todo es lo que te estoy diciendo total. lo tengo Gustavo probado. Vera ha denunciado la trata durante años. Para ha hecho cerrar él. montones de prostíbulos durante ah, ¿sí? años. Perfecto. Causas judiciales Bien. que tuvieron en Comodoro Pi. Y quiero aclarar que Comodoro el Papa, Pi. cuando era Jorge Bergoglio, yo justamente lo conocí en la... Hablemos de eso Entonces, también. Es un tipo intachable. Ah, ¿sí? Y durante Bien. años... Ha estado denunciando a los prostíbulos Esta y no está tratando a las mujeres. Vamos a pasar al señor Bergoglio y gracias. A ver, Entonces, a ver, Gustavo, perdón, decir algo? A ver, no, a ver. yo lo que quiero decir no, es... No, eh, no. Gracias, Natasha, trabajaba en el segundo, colegio. Perdón. Un segundo, ahora, ahora te dejo, ahora te dejo, te estoy escuchando okay, muy atentamente. Estás con la segunda memoria porque sabía que iba a terminar. Está, está perfecto. No, no, porque yo no sé. Eh, no lo, me sirve. Andar a revisar la basura. Deja andar a revisar la basura. Lo que yo digo es que lo importante es llevar todos los casos a la justicia. Sí, esto que tengo está en la justicia. Pará, pará, déjame terminar. En este caso que estamos hablando hablando, por ejemplo, de Independiente, en los medios se ha dicho muchas cosas. Sí. Una sola persona, de todas las que han hablado en los medios, ha ido a, a testificar en la justicia. ¿Crees que te una... hable? Pará, déjame terminar. Es? No, yo te, yo está te escuché, yo te escuché, escuchame vos sí, a mí sí, sí, y sí, después claro. eh, vos eh, sí. eh, replicás lo que yo estoy diciendo, Perfecto. si me parece que no es correcto o, o discutimos. No, está bien, te pido disculpas. No. 
La única persona que fue es una, supongo yo, es una exintegrante. Pero quiero que entiendas que es muy doloroso. ¿eh? No, pero es doloroso para todos y te, te, te lo puedo decir yo que fui el que dio la primicia. Ah, Farhat, está pasando Farhat, en Independiente. la chica Farhat. La chica sí, sí. Marian Farhat es sí. la única hasta el día de hoy de todos los que hablaron. Sí, los ¿sabes? medios... Es de, de todos los que hablaron. Los Yo medios... vengo denunciando hace cinco años, no, no, pero esto, dejame... públicamente y por todo. Perdón, es la única que fue a la sede judicial, a la UFI 4 Avellaneda, Bien. y dijo... En esta causa que En está? esta causa, y dijo... Eh, esto, UFI 4, así, así, Avenida Mitre 2615. Sí. Do, eh, doctora Garibaldi, sí. teléfono 4266-4793. Sí. Ahí está lo mío. Es la fiscal, la doctora Garibaldi. Sí, perfecto. ¿Puedo continuar entonces? Eh, ¿Pero vos fuiste a declarar en la causa? Te estoy diciendo, no, 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 no. fui cuatro, ver, ¿dónde estuve? ¿La causa? No, ahí está no. un estudio que hice de un año entero. Claro que sí que Na está. Natacha, yo lo que te digo es esto. Yo, la, la causa ya no está en secreto de sumario, con lo cual cualquier periodista... ¿Por, ¿Por qué no me dejas hablar de que está denunciado? Pero vos fuiste a declarar, llevaste... No, no declaraste bien, todavía. Voy a avanzar. Sí, Hablemos... La información que yo Graci tengo... trabajaba en el colegio Don Bosco de Solís y Moreno, señora. Este donde lamentablemente practicó la pedofilia con menores, y Bergoglio eh, lo salva sabiendo que era pedófilo y lo traslada a dónde? A manejar un lugar de chicos desamparados que no pueden quejarse, este, que es la misma, es el mismo sistema, lo mismo que pasa con el fútbol, con las pensiones. Y de ahí todo el escándalo que pasó y cómo terminó Brasi. Bergoglio fue quien lo saca de Don Bosco por pedofilia y lo mete en un lugar de chicos sin recursos. Cuando vos no tenés recursos, se abusan de vos y no tenés cómo denunciar ni hacer absolutamente nada. Perdón, cuando Tus lo amigos. sacan, cuando lo bien, sacan pero, perdón, no seguí la causa de Graci. Es una cuando falta lo sacan de respeto que digas lugar, amigos y ese, defiendas la fundación algo que, que está niños, Lo mandaron a una casa que quedaba ahí cerca, donde no había Disculpa, ningún Disculpame, ¿vos también practicas la pedofilia? Eh, Entonces déjame hablar porque... Not long after this interview, she tweeted the following... The translation is, notice, I am not going to kill myself. I am not going to go past the market and drown in a bathtub. I'm not going to stick any shots. So if that happens, I didn't. Save tweet. That has been translated as, I'm not going to shoot myself in the head. So if that happens, I didn't. This is uh, translated by the internal translating feature of Twitter. Now this tweet suggests that she had been receiving death threats for her allegations. She would later confirm that she had been, in fact, receiving such threats because of her testimony that she was about to give. We'll get to that in a moment. On Saturday, she was found dead, likely the victim of homicide. Okay, so normally for something like this, I would attempt to read something from the uh, country of origin, but the translation features uh, online are too painful, and I wanted to get this out before I could reach out to the subscriber who offered to translate things for me. I do have a link on the sources page to an article from The Clarin, which is a Argentinian online magazine or newspaper that it, that broke the story. If you want to try to read it yourself, um, the translation is really rough. So if you're watching the subscriber who offered to translate things, go ahead and read it if you want to uh, see if it clarifies anything. For this, we're going to go with the Church Militant um, uh, uh, article on this. Argentine whistleblower found dead, family suspects murder. Written by Christine Niles. Natasha Jait accused close friend of Pope Francis of sex trafficking. This is why this story is gigantic. Buenos Aires. The mysterious death of a whistleblower in Argentina is prompting family members to demand an investigation in what, into what they suspect to be murder. Natasha Jait, a model and actress, has been working on outing what she claimed to be a pedophile sex ring among celebrities and elites. Two weeks before she was scheduled to give court testimony against Gustavo Vera, whom she accused of sex trafficking, and who was a close associate of Pope Francis, she was found dead. At 2 a.m. Saturday, her naked body was found on the bed of a room in the Hotel Xanadu in Villa, R Villa La Nata in the town of Benavides. Two men were questioned at the scene, 47-year-old Guillermo Riconi, owner of the villa, and 48-year-old Raul Valestiki, a film producer and the one who called the police on finding her body. The autopsy report claimed the cause of death was heart respiratory failure, multi-organ failure, that led to pulmonary edema. The autopsy also revealed traces of cocaine in her nasal passages. Here's a quote from that Claren article. A vehicle, cocaine, a fanny pack, and a telephone were seized from the room. It was discovered that at least three more people were with the actress who were captured by security cameras while fleeing the place before police arrived. In the video recorded, you see them throwing a package into a ditch. It is suspected it contains some kind of narcotics. 
Jade's brother and attorney, however, assists, insists she would never have used cocaine because of medical medical condition she suffered. Both of them suspect foul play. Quote, We understand that she may have been a victim of a crime. He, her brother, is afraid that she was the victim of a murder. End quote, said Alejandro Cipolla, Jayet's attorney. Regarding the autopsy, Cipolla did not participate, but insisted that it be recorded from start to finish. On April 5th, 2018, Jayet tweeted, as I showed you earlier, I am not going to kill myself. I'm not going to overdose or drown in a bathtub. I'm not going to shoot myself. So if any of this happens, it wasn't me. Save this tweet. End quote. On Argentinian daytime TV last year, Jaid accused members of the soccer leagues of taking sexual advantage of poor young males. Referring to Newell's Old Boys, a sports club in Rosario, Santa Fe, in Argentina, Jaid said, I reported that the kids from the pensions who had no money and were from small towns, kids who played in the minor leagues, were being asked for oral sex by Newell's Old Boys kit man in exchange for cleats. He would ask for this from kids who had no money whatsoever. Among those she accused was also Gustavo Vera, a longtime associate of Pope Francis, claiming he ran a sex trafficking ring using his anti-trafficking organization as a front group. Did you know that Gustavo Vera is a pedophile, that he is a trafficker? Jayet asked a panelist on the show. Did you know that he gets brothels shut down and then he keeps them for himself illegally? Did you know that I carried out a study and that I have video records of prostitutes talking about it? Jayet claims she presented her evidence to law enforcement and went on to detail how she investigated Vera. What did I do? Take video, do logistics, and follow him for a year, she explained. Prostitutes from the streets and, unfortunately, from apartments had to endure being raped and sexually abused for 200, 500 pesos in the power of Mr. Vera. On being challenged by a panelist who was a friend of Vera, Jait shot back, I can prove everything. Vera is head of La Alameda, an organization that claims to fight sex trafficking in Argentina. He's a longtime associate of Pope Francis, their collaboration going back more than a decade. They first met in 2008 when Vera's organization was going through a difficult time. We needed protection, Vera told People magazine in 2015, explaining that members of his organization were being assaulted in the streets by criminal groups they had denounced. We heard Archbishop Bergoglio give a homily on human trafficking and slavery and decided to approach him, he said. From that moment on, we worked together on the streets, Vera said, and, and when there was a witness being intimidated by the perpetrators of the crime, Jorge would make sure to be photographed with that witness to send a clear message, we are all standing with this person who has been so brave. Bergoglio nicknamed Vera God's Trotsky, and Vera made clear his gratitude for Bergoglio's protection. I'm pretty sure Lucas and I would have ended up floating down the river face down had we not had Jorge's support and involvement in our neighborhood association. After, Bergoglio and Vol Ele after Bergoglio's elevation to the Holy See, he invited Vera to visit him at Casa Santa Marta, where the Pope baptized the children of their mutual friend, Lucas Scherer. In February 2015, Vera published a private email sent to him from the pontiff, who feared Argentina would soon be afflicted with many of the troubles experienced in Mexico. Pope Francis still calls Vera once a week. In the same TV appearance, Jair also mentioned Bergoglio's well-documented attempt to defend Father Julio Cesar Grassi, a convicted pedophile. Grassi was found guilty in 2009 of two acts of aggravated assault of a minor, but was allowed to remain free while his appeals went through the court system. During that time, he claimed the support of then Cardinal Bergoglio, president of the bishops of Argentina, who commissioned a leading criminal defense lawyer, Marcello Sanchinetti, to put together a report to exonerate Grassi. The report, 2,800 pages long, was slammed for its attempts to discredit the victims. Attorney Juan Pablo Gallego, who represented the pla plaintiffs, saying it was a scandalous instance of lobbying and exerting pressure on the court. The court was unswayed by Bergoglio's attempt to defend Grassi, finding the priest guilty of sex abuse and sentencing him to 15 years. Judge Carlos Mahiquez, among those who received the report, said it was extremely partial, its goal being to exert a subtle form of pressure on the judges to rule in favor of Grassi. In spite of Bergoglio's public role in commissioning the counter study on Grassi's behalf, he denied having anything to do with, with it when questioned. A documentary published in 2018 titled Sex Abuse in the Church, Code of Silence, revealed an exchange between the pontiff and a journalist asking about Grassi. Your Holiness, Your Holiness, in the Grassi case, did you try to influence Argentine justice? Pope Francis answered no. No, then why did you commission a counter-inquiry? The pontiff replied, I never did, before turning away. Jait had received multiple threats over the past year and had recently accused two men of raping her. She was also set to appear in court two weeks t in two weeks' time to give testimony and evidence against Vera. A major investigation is being launched into the cause of Jait's death, involving a special team called by the Attorney General of San Isidro, Beatriz Molinelli. 
The team will include several prosecutors as well as the Deputy Attorney General of San Isidro and a Judicial Secretary. And if you want to read that article for yourself, there's a link on the Sources blog, which is at returntotradition.org. Later, it was reported that her cell phone was missing, which is alleged to have contained critical information about human trafficking, possibly including her allegations against Gustavo Vera. As an aside, I really shouldn't have to say this, but it is very suspicious to have a body of a woman found in the nude with narcotics beside her body and in her nose just prior to her being set to testify against a suspected human trafficker. This looks to me like it was designed to send a message and to utterly discredit her in her, in her death. So, who was Gustavo Vera? That's where this connection to Pope Francis comes in. In October, Jait tweeted, Gustavo Vera is a pimp, a sex trafficker, and an accomplice to the Pope, and as I predicted, was, trying to was tried for misappropriation of funds at Alameda and other illegal acts. God will do what is just someday. Amen. Vera has been accused by independent investigators other than Jait of being involved in the trade of narcotics, human trafficking, including children, using an anti-trafficking organization to, to actually conduct human trafficking, while using that organization to shut down the competition. La Alameda receives funding from the Vatican. Investigators have made unconfirmable at this time claims that about what that money from the Vatican is used for, but again, I wasn't able to corroborate any of that, so I won't repeat it here. However, there have been allegations that Gustavo Vera had been acting as a spokesman for the Francis Papacy in Argentina, an allegation that the Vatican has very loudly denied. However, strangely, Vera kept at it for years, while seeing the Pope every other month and chatting on the phone with him weekly. If he had not been acting as a Francis spokesman, surely the Pope would have told him to cease and desist in one of their meetings or phone calls. And then there's the curious behavior of then Cardinal Bergoglio. While working with La Alameda himself, he had the reputation for walking the streets in his, car, in his clerics and protecting activists going after traffickers, who, in order to make it obvious that those activists were under his protection. He and Vera's advocates claimed this, while at the same time, the Argentinian media leveled major allegations against Cardinal Bergoglio for having done little to nothing to protect minors from abuse at the hands of corrupt clergy in Argentina. Yes, the problem of clerical sex abuse goes well beyond the United States, and Pope Francis has a long personal history of, with it. And that's all despite what has been said by the Pope and his official surrogates. In fact, Bergoglio was criticized by UN officials whose job it is to fight human trafficking for his silence on the clerical sex abuse question in Argentina. This, again, all while having a close relationship with the head of La Alameda, a nonprofit organization whose public purpose is to undermine the trafficking of children and women. It's a bizarre paradox of a story which leaves a lot of questions, which is why, in closing, I ask that people be careful in jumping to conclusions just yet. Also, if you're in Argentina, please send me news as this story unfolds. I plan to keep an eye on it and duly report on it as it continues. I have someone who has offered to translate articles for me, so please feel free to email news to me once on this or similar stories. So as a final aside, I just found out late in production that uh, Natasha Jait was by a model. The media, the media called her a model. Um, that is a that was a euphemism. She was an adult film star. So again, I don't want to slime the source on this. Um, the connections to human trafficking in the adult film industry are notorious. So maybe in that capacity she was in a position to have seen things firsthand. I don't know. However, again, caution is needed in this case. Um, it, you know, being, adult film stars aren't known for being the best sources of information, but at the same time she was in a unique position to possibly have seen things because of that position. I don't know. She also may have been repentant. I don't know enough about her background. Um, but I was informed by someone I trust in a very late in the production of this video that her background wasn't exactly what most of us would call being a model. Thank you for listening and for your support. If you want to support my work, there are options in the description of this video. I ask that people continue to pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the Catholic Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.